I had mentioned that 26% by composition of municipal solid waste by weight is made up of yard waste and food waste. This is the easiest and simplest thing to recycle or what we call compost. So for this lesson we'll focus on what is composting, how does it work, understanding the process, and knowing how you can compost the wastes and have a source reduction from the very beginning never needing to throw anything organic away. So compost is very simply the process by which we can take food or organic matter and break it down and turn it back into soil. What's actually built inside of a compost pile is not soil, it's organic matter straight organic matter and what we can do is we can mix that with soil to increase the quality to increase the nutrients inside of a soil so really what we're doing is we're creating organic matter to enrich natural or depleted soils it can be done very simply there's nothing complicated about it you can do it in your backyard like this pile here that's just chicken wire wrapped around in a circle All right, you can use wooden slats and make a pile inside that like this one here you can literally just have a pile right? there's nothing really complicated about it this is a little bit more of an advanced one the three bin system and in the three bin system what you want to do is you want to have start you want to start to decompose stuff on the left and then as it decomposes you mix it into the pile in the middle and then as the process continues you move it on to the right where it's then used as fertile soil as it completes the process. Compost makes tremendous fertilizer in your garden for two reasons. All right, first it's rich in organic matter All right, the, the nitrogen, the potassium, and the phosphorus that you need but also the best thing about using compost over an industrial fertilizer is that compost slowly releases those nutrients into the soil. All right, so it's better to use. Industrial fertilizers try to do this. If you buy fertilizer out of bag, miracle Grow, you'll see right on the bag, slow release. So in nature, that's what nature wants to do. As things decompose, it slowly releases nutrients back into the soil, that, and that's better to use. You can compost food scraps right out of your kitchen. And what we're going to do is we're going to talk about what everybody wants to know uh, when they're composting. What can you and what can't you compost? Here's a little bit more complicated of a compost bin that looks like this. The black bin, you might have one of these in your backyard or maybe your neighbor does. A little bit more complicated of a system. Uh, but just know that you don't need such a complicated system. It could be as simplified as just chicken wire in a pile. Um, and then take a look inside of this one. You can see some of the things that are being composted here. There's uh, kitchen scraps, uh, vegetable and fruit peels. Uh, there's even poor quality cardboard from an egg carton. That's no problem to compost. Newspaper that's shredded. So there's a lot of different items that you can compost very simply in your backyard. You can even do it inside if you like with a worm composting bin. And we have one of these systems in the classroom and you know just you can do this inside your house and if you do it right there's no smells there's no reason to get dirty you're literally just taking organic material and breaking it down like nature does all right so when composting it's really important to know the right ratio of materials to add to your compost pile all right and this is what it's all about this is how you compost all right, knowing the right ratio in order to be a good composter. Basically what we're looking at are two nutrients, two elements that you must put in in just the right combination. And those two elements are carbon and nitrogen. What we're looking here is a carbon to nitrogen ratio. And what you want is, generally speaking, somewhere between 25 and 30 parts of carbon for every one part of nitrogen. That's what you want if you want to get the right ratio. And if you do that, if you get 25 to 30 parts of carbon per one part of nitrogen, 
your compost will quickly decompose, you'll have a good blend, there won't be any smell, and you'll have good organic material to add to your soil in a short time. All right, if you don't have the right ratio, you're like for example, if you have too much carbon, the process will slow down. All right, it won't decompose as fast. Or if you put in too much nitrogen, you'll get a bad smell. You'll get that smell. All right, so it's about getting the right ratio. So you need to know exactly how much carbon and how much nitrogen are in every material you put in. And that becomes very, very, very difficult. There's no way to, to understand that. So there's a more general rule of thumb that you can go by that might be a little bit easier. And you could think of it as greens to browns. All right, and your greens are going to be your nitrogens and your browns are going to be your carbon and the general rule of thumb is that you want two parts nitrogen for every one part carbon you want two greens for every one brown the amount of nitrogen and carbon in each material ranges so much that if you use this general rule of thumb you can make it work you need to look at your materials and try and understand them but you could put your materials into categories, nitrogen rich and carbon rich. And if you go by this general rule of thumb, it should work. So let's take a look real quick at some of these materials that you can compost. Um, let's start with carbon. All right, your carbon rich materials are things like eggshells, all right, are good carbon sources, uh, fruit, leaves are tremendous carbon sources. All right, shredded newspaper. All right, sawdust, tea leaves, wood ash. All right, the list goes on and on uh, for good carbon sources. Nitrogen sources. Uh, the best nitrogen source is grass clippings. That's typically what most people put in their compost piles. That's the most common. Other things like vegetable peels. Uh, general food waste that's green all right those are going to be good nitrogen sources so what you want to do is you want to mix these up in just the right ratio to get a good compost that ratio being 30 to 1 30 parts carbon for every one part nitrogen but if you think about it in that general rule of thumb two parts green to one part brown should make it work so for more information you do want to go online there's tremendous amounts of information online there's a book written in the 1980s called worms eat my garbage and that book really inspired a lot of people to try backyard composting and it really started a revolution in this in this activity so that's a quick and brief overview so you get a better idea of what to compost and knowing the right ratio and that that ratio is the most important thing to make this system work okay so this slide here goes ahead and shows you what we just talked about some of the things that you that you can put in your compost in re regarding greens and browns uh, things we just talked about uh, organic kitchen waste grass cuttings uh, tea bags but I'm, I'm not sure about the tea bag itself uh, some some are com compostable but not all of them old flowers uh, weeds and then you got the, your browns the twigs cardboard uh, eggshells, straw and hay, sawdust, things like that. But what's important here is to realize what you should not add. All right, Never, never, never add a couple of these things. Don't ever put in any meat or bones, poultry or fish, all right, eggs, whole eggs, uh, dairy products. Never put any uh, human or pet feces, any weeds that are have seeds on them or are growing like crazy you know in the fall when when some of the weeds have their seeds on it you shouldn't put those into your compost bin so just as it's important to understand what to put in in the right ratio you need to understand what not to put in and these are the things that you should never never put in your compost pile if you want it to work all right um, just for your information the meat the meat and the poultry and the eggs what you want to keep those out of there for the smell. What it's going to do is it's going to attract animals, and then that's not going to be good for your compost pile. So to understand composting, you need to understand it in a certain way. And what I mean is you need to understand it as a food chain. 
Alright, you want to build an environment as good as possible for the organisms within that food chain. So the better you make it for the organisms, the faster the material will decompose. So when you look at it as a food chain, let's take a look at what we're looking at here. All right, at the base of the food chain, you're going to start with the microorganisms, all right, the bacteria, the fungi, all right, things like that. And that bacteria is typically thermophilic. All right, some of the bacteria is what's called thermophilic, and thermophilic is or the is that bacteria that produces heat as a byproduct. So that's why your compost pile heats up in the middle of it because those bacteria are breaking down organic matter at the base of this food chain. So hopefully you realize the base of the food chain here, the bacteria and the fungus, that's the most important part. You need the base of the food chain in order for the whole entire system to work. So the next step on the food chain would be the small organisms, things like uh, sow bugs. Uh, nematodes, uh, small worms, things like that. And then the next step would be the larger organisms like beetles, mites, uh, the, your centipedes. So just understand these guys are a feeding food chain that will take our organic waste and break it down into organic matter that we can mix with our soil. All right, you need to make sure that the environment is good for these guys. So you want to increase as much as possible the base of the food chain all the way up. All right, so what do you need to do to make sure that your organic waste composts? Thinking about your compost pile as a living organism makes a lot of sense. So what do you need to make sure it composts? You need a couple of things here. All right, the first thing is moisture. You need plenty of moisture, but not too much. You don't want to drown your organisms. You want to give it just the right amount, and when it dries out, you water it again. So you need to provide just the right amount of moisture. The second thing is to aerate it. All right, the organisms that are inside the compost pile are organisms that break down material aerobically. They need oxygen. So you're going to need to mix it up at times and add oxygen. We want to keep the anaerobic bacteria out. Those are the bacteria that are bad. They'll create smells and they'll cause problems. So what you want to do is keep the anaerobic bacteria out and mix your pile and make sure it has plenty of aerations. You want to get the oxygen into the system so that those, ba those aerobic bacteria do their job. Okay. The third thing is just the right amount of heat temperature. All right, you need to maintain the temperature. You don't want it to be too hot. You don't want it to be too cold. So starting a system, usually out in the sun in springtime, is a good opportunity for organisms to get some heat. All right, so you want to maintain your heat and measure it constantly to make sure it's not too hot and it's not too cold. The fourth thing is volume. All right, it needs to be just right. And a general rule of thumb is that you want your compost pile to be about three feet by three feet by three feet. And what that's going to do is that's going to allow enough air to get into your system. It's also going to provide enough insulation for the organisms to stay warm. All right, so the right amount of volume is also important. The last thing is something that people often forget, surface area. What I mean is the materials that you're putting into your system, you, you want to reduce the surface area of those materials to make it a little bit easier to break it down. So what you don't want to do is put in large giant oak leaves or if you've seen a sycamore tree leaf, those large leaves are difficult for organisms to decompose, but if you shred it, it makes it easier. So if you put in newspaper or large leaves or large materials, you want to reduce the surface area to allow the organisms to break it down a little easier. So if you do these five things, keeping these things in mind, it will allow decomposition in your compost pile in just a few months. And then you can use it right in your garden, and you're practicing source reduction, and you're recreating nature by using natural processes to, to break down your unwanted organic matter. And you're reusing it again in your garden.
If we look at composting at a large scale, it can be done by your township. You can collect it at the curbside or have a drop-off location in your town where residents can drop off or pick up good soil for gardening. All right, the township will maintain a compost facility. And if you look here, it'll come in on the left and it's processed. And when it's about ready, it'll go over to the right here to what they call cure, all right, where it'll dry out and get its nice rich color and texture to be given out and used within the community. So some communities have these processing centers where you can take your yard waste or your organic waste and they'll process it for you and you can either buy it back or some townships actually will give it to you for free um, good rich organic matter to mix in with your soil and your gardens. Alright, there's a local company on Haltman Road in Schwanksville that does this on a large scale and you can take your compost to them and they'll turn it into compost and then you can buy it back and use it in your gardens. Alright, and then there's some unique uses for compost like the composting toilet. Alright, something to think about. At the Save House, our model is called the Sunmar Excel version. All right, and what it does is, as you add material to it, it literally composts the material inside of a bin within the unit. And every three to four months, you pull out the material, which has been completely composted, and you return it to nature. All right, so not only are you recycling organic material, it's also a waterless system, which is a great advantage. Here's the one at the save house. You can take a look. And as a great gift, you can go online. Completely made of composted material is the poo pet. Or another creative use for compost is the compost cookie.